All right, so today we're gonna to be working on these two green velvet tufted wing back chairs. Then I can't really say they're antique. Um, they're remakes. They're pretty cheaply made, but we're gonna we're gonna bring them back to life. Um, as you can see, the back there's no padding on the outside of them. Um, the wood, the legs are, are made of plastic. They're not wood. Look at the wood on the inside. The wood is all uh, ain't no padding on the outside. I'm gonna try to fix that, and you know, I had to shave some of this wood down. Um, you know, the arms aren't even aren't even padded well. This is really definition of a remake. This is not an antique piece of furniture. Oh, you see that Andre's custom poster? Make sure y'all go check out my Facebook page, my Facebook business page. All right, so this one right here, you can look at the top of it and see that the shit is is not even even. But I, I can fix that. I'm pretty sure the foam is still good It's just moved over too far Whoever made this in the factory They moved it over too far um, The excess wrinkles uh, And it's, that's that's not even because of age Or because it's been worn down It's because the way they, uh, they they put the tufts in They put it through the foam Like I say, the fake tax Look at the fake tax You know what I mean? That's that's cheap right there But we're going we gonna to do something about that The back, I had to change the backs up You see the original back is just straight across I had to roll with the Alright, so now we're gonna do buttons. I'm gonna start off with the buttons. I'm not gonna drag y'all with this because there's a lot of buttons on here. I'm just gonna show you the process. First, we're gonna cut some dies out. You know, we roll it up five, six, seven times. And you got a die press. Pop some of them out. I guess I got enough already. I'm just gonna demonstrate a couple of them, then we're gonna get straight to the video. Now that the buttons are all made, it's time to make some, cut some twine for the buttons. The easiest way to do this when you have multiple buttons, wrap it around your arm a couple times, whatever, how many times buttons you have, which is like 27. So I wrapped them around like 27, 28, 29 times, something like that, for extra. And you just use the scissors to go ahead and cut. That'll be the perfect length from arm to elbow, hand to elbow. Perfect length. Bam, one cut, and that's it. That's all your strap. Lace them up. And you're good to go. All right, so this is another reason why I consider this chair a little bit cheap. Uh, most chair, most tufted chairs will actually have the buttons going all the way through the couch, all the way through the chair. This right here, they just, it's like fact, factory style, the way they, they, they pop out some foam and they have one guy who just puts these buttons in a piece of foam, then they have another guy who just applies everything to the chair. So it's, it's factory style. I respect that. You see how how off that is? The foam is actually good foam. I just have to steam it out. Um, for some reason, they they upholstered it factory. I couldn't get away with that. If I if I upholstered that chair like that, with one pleat way over to the left, another one to the right, I couldn't get paid. But somehow, you know, these custom companies they 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 get it done. So I'm gonna pop all these buttons out. I'm gonna steam this foam, um, and we're gonna try to bring it back to life. But I'm I'm gonna do it a little different. I'm gonna put the, I'm gonna put the foam to the chairs. And I'm gonna post the buttons through the full chair. And my steam is not really working too well. But uh, I'm gonna get it steamed out and we're gonna keep it moving. All 
Okay, so apparently I lost the footage of me steaming these pieces of foam out, but I, I, I got them done. Um, I also lost the footage of me cutting most of the material out. It took six yards of this gray suede, um, exactly six yards. Um, and I normally don't use patterns when it comes to tufting, but this this was so basic. There's actually a measurement for that. So you don't, you, I'm not gonna let you, I mean, I ain't saying I ain't gonna let you see. I lost the footage of me drawing out the dots for um, the patterns. So right now I'm just gonna sew on some pulls because like I say, I was kind of short on material, but six yards is perfect for this. As long as you sew on some pulls, six yards is perfect for two wing back diamond tufted chairs of this size. Let me change this thread out. So right now I'm actually just sewing on the pulls. That just leaves me extra space to pull the material through the through the couch, the parts where you won't see. So I don't have to waste material, good material on parts you don't see. Um, and like I say, I already, already measured out my pleats. I mean my tufts. Everywhere my buttons are supposed to go. So you're not gonna see that when I when I start throwing this uh, needle in there, you ain't gonna see what I'm really doing. Cause I didn't, I, I forgot to, I either lost it, or my, it wasn't recording. But uh, here we go. First things first, I'm gonna burlap the bottom cause they didn't have a burlap. They don't have to burlap their springs or any of that because like I say, they put the buttons directly onto the phone. They didn't worry about going through the couch. It was, it's just easier like that. But I'm gonna do it the correct way. We're going all the way through. So we're gonna put this burlap down to have something for the, the buttons to, to hold on to. They do have a piece of material on the back. I can I can reuse that. As you can see, the arms, no padding on there. You can feel the cardboard and the wood on those arms. But I'm gonna do something for that too. Alright, so I almost forgot that I was recording, so I started doing the fast way. So I don't recommend anyone, I'm, I'm going to actually show you how to do it the correct way on the back. But this bottom seat, I just went all in. Because I was like, man, I already got the measurements, so I'm just going to go all in. So you don't normally want to do it the way I'm doing it right here, I'm just throwing all the buttons in there all at one time. Bam, 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 bam. I'm just throwing the buttons in there. Typically you want to go one by one see what it's looking like i just got a little cocky because you know i'm just me but i'm actually going to put all 10 of these buttons in here first and then lock them down and then play with the pleats i do not recommend this for anybody who doesn't know how to do this to just throw the buttons in there and then play with it you actually need to go one at a time um yeah like i said i i'll show you the actual full process on the back and I'll actually show you how I'm tying these off. I'm tying these these buttons off in a certain way to where if, if something's wrong, I can just pull one string, unloosen it, and take it out and redo it. But um, they're, they're locked in tight right now. So what I'm doing, I'm locking them all in at one time. Like I said, don't do this at home, kids. Um, I'm a professional. But So I did them all at one time. Now I'm just going to play with the pleats and play with the seat. Um... Yeah, I also end up losing the footage of this one too. So this is about all you're going to end up seeing is be playing with it and getting it done. Yeah, I lost the footage on that one too. Going so fast, but I slowed it down after that. I was like, damn, I lost this footage. So let me go ahead and slow down. Because that's what the video is for, for people to see exactly how I do it. So trust me, the back, I'll show you the back full process.
like I said, uh, we lost some footage right there. So now it's looking fresh and clean already. And you're like, well, damn, you didn't, I didn't see that happen, but it happened. Um, I lost the footage. I did the front band also. You see that front band I did? Um, now it's time to work on the arms. Like I said, there's no padding in the arms. The cardboard itself is it's just too flimsy. So you need something to back that cardboard. You see how, you see how that, that cardboard just bows in? So I'm going to throw some webbing on in there. Staple some webbing in there. Two will do. It just, it's just going to keep that cardboard from caving in the next time. I'm going to throw a one inch piece of foam under there. I'm adding this extra because you can actually feel the wood in the old chairs. Throw a one inch piece of foam under there. Staple it down. Then I'm going to go with cotton on the top. You never can fail with cotton on the top. Sides exactly the same. Two strips of webbing, one inch foam, and a good layer of cotton on the top. So they actually already have material on the back that I can use to help uh, keep these buttons in. So I don't have to use any um, burlap for those. And the cut time on this video, I actually do one side without the camera footage and then I'll do the other side on footage. Um, so I already did the other arm. And here's the process of me doing this first arm. First just, you know, just place it around where you need it at. You can make your cuts later. Get it snug, hit the major corners. And that padding actually did wonders. I mean, if you could feel these arms, you'd be like, wow. Total difference. I also lost the footage of me showing how you could, you could see the wood through the arms. If you push down, you could actually see the wood. So I didn't want to give that back to my customer like that. I couldn't do that. I just couldn't. I had, that. I had to put money in it put extra materials in this job this is a basic real poster job this is not a strip down this is not like I'm, I'm, I'm taking it all the way down to the guts and building it back up from scratch I'm actually just real poster I'm supposed to just real poster the material whatever you got under there we put it right back that's a basic real poster job
All right, so the inside arms are done. Now it's time for the wings. And because you, you don't really, you know, you don't really use the wings, you don't need that much padding. So I'm gonna throw a, a little slice of Dacron on there. Yeah, a little slice of Dacron. Which will give it a little extra fluffiness, but it's not, it's not meant to really pad pad, but it, it does a little more than what it was. So I lost the footage of me sewing these wings, but they're, they're pretty simple. Um, like I said, I'm gonna change the back so my cord actually has to connect. And on, on the first chair, I actually connected the cord all the way from one wing to the other wing. But this one, I, I made the cord separate. But the cord will actually go around the top the same as, as, as the other one I did. I just, I just like the design better where the cord wraps around the curve at the top versus just going straight across like a box. That's just straight factory style. If you go straight like a box, that's factory. Utilize that wood you created. They created some round wood, so we're gonna throw that cord around the round piece of wood. I literally go through about 20 pair of gloves in this video. I'm really not used to using gloves, but I kind of had to because the suede was acting funny. Um, but these gloves are getting on my nerves. If you can't tell, every time I put a pair on, as soon as I start touching something, they bust open. So you're gonna actually see me go through a lot of pair of gloves in this video. All right, let's get to this main event. The inside back. We're gonna do it one by one. Uh, never mind, two by two. Oh. Yeah, okay. Uh, oh, I, thought I, I thought I was gonna do it one by one, but I guess I'm doing three at a time. It's just such a simple chair. I'm doing three at a time, but I'm gonna show you the process of doing the back. All right. It's still kind of over. If you can see, I can tell from the back. Once I pop those in there, this is why you gotta do it one by one and come something like that. You can tell that the right side is too far over. 
even though I recognized the right side was too far over, I still went ahead and started putting it in there. I don't know what I was thinking. I forgot I was being recorded. So I'm gonna end up taking these out, but um, just watch the process. I started to do what the original person did. I just pulled it all the way over to the side. So now I got to move it back over. I actually had to staple it down. Cause I was like, man, it's not going to move on me again. So I, I even glued it down. It's like, yo, don't move on me no more. And I'm still going to have issues with this phone moving over. All right, first button in one at a time this time. Let's do it one at a time, see if we get this right. Yeah, that looks good enough that we can go to the next level. Once that top row looks good, you can go to the next level.
So my Ordro 8 actually went dead on me as I was doing the inside back. So we're gonna come back to that. So I threw in some of this footage of me cutting out the wings and the arm panels. But we're gonna actually use a different camera to show you the outside arm, the arm panels, and the tacks before we get back to doing the inside back. Because I can actually do those things without having to do the inside back. So I, I use that time to do other things. When I say this chair took exactly six yards, it took exactly six yards. This is all the scraps I have left. And I think I used them for something, but this is it. Six yards exactly. Two suede wing back tufted, deep button tufted chairs. All right, we're gonna start on the outside arms. Uh, Level it out, make sure we've got enough space on both sides and we'll tack the top and pull outward. That's how I like that. I go in the middle. And that's, I, that's how I do most of my upholstery. I start in the middle and pull outward. It seems to be the best way to get things straight and linear. Start in the middle. As you can remember from the videos in the beginning, the outside arms had no padding at all. So we're gonna try to help that with some Dacron and we're gonna um, use some scrap material to um, stiffen the outside. Cardboard tacking strip to make sure our line is straight. After the cardboard tacking strip, we're gonna fill in this little pocket right there in the front with some uh, cotton. Fill in the pocket with cotton and then cover it up with some scrap material. Then we're gonna reinforce the outside arms with some more scrap material. This actually, believe it or not, it makes the outside arms stiff up under that, um, the Dacron I'm about to put on there. That way, when you push on the outside, you don't feel that wood. You, you're gonna feel wood if you push hard enough, but you're not. It's not gonna cave in like some cheap piece of furniture, basically. So we're, we're actually building this up a little bit more than what we're supposed to be doing. But I just couldn't see it in myself giving back a piece of furniture with just material on pieces of wood. I can't do that. That's just not my style. When it comes time to putting this material on, you want to go center right center, left center, any kind of center. You don't want to hit them corners first. And this is so much faster. You go to them centers and pull outward. Look at that, look at that right there. You see how it just, it just, it's like melting like butter on that wood. Bam, 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 bam. See that right there? That's the technique. I've seen a lot of upholsters just go corner to corner. It's all type of crazy stuff. This is the simplest way to upholster. Hit those centers first and then pull out. So that is definitely solid right there. So we're going to work on these arm panels. Um, you don't really have to like apply these arm panels because the tacks are going to do most of the work. So I, I strategically place these staples in this arm panel to get the wrinkles out. That's all I'm really doing. It's just really to set it on there because the tacks, I have to tack this whole front side. So I'm not really trying to staple it on like I'm upholstering it. Because all these staples, if, if, if you can see a staple through the tacks, I got to pull that, that staple up before I throw a tack down there. So these staples actually could come up at any time. I could take them out anytime I want to. But we're just trying to get it down. Lay them down to where 
when I throw the tacks in there, it'll look lined up. Do that to both sides. This one actually was a little different. I, like I said, this is factory stuff. Um, this actual arm panel didn't even line up right. So I had to bend it and twist it to make it act right because the wood wasn't even perfect. It wasn't like, it wasn't symmetrical. So I had to work a little bit to get this one on here. I think I just stapled my glove. I'm definitely getting tired of these gloves. One of these things got to go. Bam. Get out of here. All right, so we ready for the text. When it comes to these texts, you literally have to start in the corners. You have to start in the corner so you can line it up. You always make your, make your ends meet in the middle. You don't make them meet at the end because it might not work out. So you start in the corners, and I'm not gonna bore y'all because there's a lot of texts. We're gonna kind of speed through these texts. Ain't really much to talk about through these texts. Um, but like I say, if, if, there, if I run into a staple while I'm tacking, and you can see that staple after I tack it, I'll pull that, that tack back up and pull that staple out. Because you don't really need the staples anymore. But you can still see them before I get to the tack. But if you can see it after I put the tack on, I'll take it back out. So you have to keep in mind when you're stapling these panels on, staple it to where a tack will cover it. With the band and the arm panel. Alright, so now my Ordro 8 is charged up and ready to go. We can get back to the doing this inside back. Um, I'm trying to line it up to the bottom. And that's the hard thing about doing cheap furniture because it's already not right. You got to make it back right. You got to make it right. So I'm having a kind of a hard time lining this foam up because it didn't come originally right. So sometimes... The cheaper furniture is harder to do than the most expensive furniture.
I've got to keep checking it to make sure it's it's lined up and at least symmetrical. I mean, I'm not going to get it perfect because it wasn't built perfect, but I got to keep trying to look on both sides to make sure it's better than what it was. Because there ain't no going back sometimes. For the sake of time, I had to get these chairs out of here ASAP, so I did lose some footage, but the next tufted chairs I do, I will share the measurements, I will share exactly how I tie the back off, and especially share the measurements on how you can get perfect pleats without any wrinkles at all. Um, I personally don't even use the measurements because I like to go... I, I like to play it by hand, you know what I mean, by touch. That's how I do my pleats. I only did these because they are, they already came with measurements, basically. They were already factory made. So you can actually mathematically put those holes in there and just poke them all in there and, and your tufts will come out perfectly. I just think the upholsterers who did it at the factory, they just didn't do it perfectly, you know. They had the measurements. They had the foam. They had the wood. They had everything. They just didn't do it right. So I was here to make it right, and I normally don't use those measures, but next chair I do, I will use measurements and I will show you exactly how to measure out any button tufted back, seat, ottoman, couch, chair, anything. Because there is mathematics to it. Um, don't worry about the wrinkles, because as long as you, your measurements are right, those wrinkles will disappear later on. You see how I pull on that and they disappear? This is not very hard. So after all of the buttons are in, this is basically the most meticulous part. Is is like finishing out the edges. That's what's gonna make all of your pleats just look, your tufts just look perfect. As long as you finish out all the edges and all the corners and all the bottoms and all the tops and all the sides just right, all that center wrinkle stuff you see, it's gonna disappear. It's gonna disappear like magic.
Uh oh, there you go. I know y'all see that. I know y'all see them wrinkles disappearing. Damn, that boy is good. God almighty. Look at that right there. You see all that little playing around, a little extra stuffing, the little pulls on the top, the sides, and the bottom. That's 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 um dedication right there to work. Factory can never top that. Factory could never top the dedication and the meticulousness of the art, the craft, the trade. To making sure everything is perfect. Look at that right there. We ain't even there. We ain't even all the way there yet. Now I'm connecting the cord around the top curve. If you remember the, the original chairs went straight across. I guess they didn't want to do the extra work of, of using flex grip. You have to use flex grip to apply the outside back to this curve. 
That's exactly why they didn't use they, they didn't use the curve. Because it's a lot easier and it's a lot cheaper to just go straight across. You use a straight across with a piece of cardboard tacking strip like I used on the outside arm. You can use a piece of cardboard for that. But to get that curve around the back, it's another it's another tool you gotta use for that right there. Alright, so this is the flex grip I was telling you about. This is about the only way, other than spit tacks, the only way you're gonna apply a curve, a curve back, or a curve any kind of piece with material to where you can close it off and it won't see the um, you won't be able to see how it's attached. So we're gonna use about 30 inches of um, flex grip, easy on, easy grip, whatever they call it. Around my way, they call it flex grip. That's the name on the box. Um, this actually is easy to apply because it has holes where you can just staple in the holes. You don't want to put it all the way up to the cord. You want to give like at least a millimeter or two up up to the stitch. Right there. If you, let me slow it down real quick. Bam, right there. You see that? I guess you can't see it, but you know what I mean. Don't go all the way up to the core, don't go all the way up to the stitch. Give it like a millimeter and you'll have enough room to fold your material up in there. I'll show you how you get the material up in there. If you can remember the earlier video of the original, there was no padding on the bag, no reinforcement. So I'm going to end up using some scrap material that blue that blue velvet that I had that's easy scrap material um, to reinforce the back then we're gonna put a piece of Dacron or batten whatever you want to call it on the back so when you push in on it it won't collapse on you All right, so when it comes to this flex grip, you want to go ahead and get your centerpiece right there. And I normally have a regulator, but I'm using my um, my needle to push it on in there and, and smush the flex grip. You got to bend the flex grip in there. To get, it's got teeth on it where it hooks into the material and it pushes it in. So I get a good hook at the top, staple at the bottom, get my centers. Like, like I said, the centers and pull out is the best way to do it. Any type of upholstery, you get your centers and you pull outwards. That's how you make any piece of material lay flat all types of ways. Get those centers first and pull outwards. So I'm getting my centers and then I'm pushing in on the flex grip and I'm going to push those teeth in. See, I'm pushing those teeth in to hook that material. This side came up on me, but I'm going I'm to get it back right. Sometimes you, need a, you might need a relief cut because it is a little bit of a curve right there to get that wrinkle out. Once you push the excess in, you can smush the smush the, the teeth down in to grip the material even more. 
to where you know it's not going away. Don't worry about them wrinkles because I haven't pulled the bottom out yet. Once you pull the bottom and the sides, wrinkles disappear. All right, to close out the back, we call these metal tacking strips. See, my metal tacking strip is a little too short. So I'm gonna have to use an extra piece to add on to make, it, to make the, bottom, the bottom reach and the sides close out. Now the difference for what I'm doing and what they did, they didn't use any backing for their metal tacking strips. They just used metal tacking strips on their material which left lumps and the metal poke basically poked through so i'm going to use some cardboard tacking strip to tape on the back of these metal tacking strips so when i close the back off you won't be able to see so i'm going to use regular tape and i guess you guys can see all that box chevy stuff up there that's my next that's going to be one of my next videos i got to finish this box chevy that dashboard i did in the last video that's a full interior. You'll be able to see the full interior. I'm going to do the door panels next. But that full interior, I'm waiting for them seats. I think I'm going to like, I think you guys are going to like the way those seats turn out. But as of right now, we're doing this, these two um, tufted chairs. So a simple trick I learned to get these uh, tacking strips on perfectly. You gotta pull one side and draw a line right on the corner. Pull those wrinkles out and draw a line right on the corner with some chalk. Guess I didn't do too well. Okay, there we go. Pulling the wrinkles out. Pull the wrinkles out. Draw the line right on the exactly on the corner. And that's where you're gonna apply your tacking strip. It'll give you a straight line know what you need to apply.
I am pressing down the spikes right into the material on the line, directly on the line. And that should actually work perfectly. I've never had this fail. You draw that line right on the corner and put those, put that tack and strip spikes right in that line, flip it over and hammer it in and it's perfect. I typically don't start my hammering at the top because it, it tends to pull out. So I start half like a third way down, then go back up and then go down. A third way up, go up, then go down. So I'm hammering these. I don't have a, a mallet. So I use a typical regular hammer with material or padding on it. And that should straighten out one side. Don't worry about the wrinkles yet because you still only did one side. Once you get to the other side, you can pull out all the extra wrinkles and it'll be tight, snug, and you won't even be able to push through. So we're gonna do the same process on the other side. We're gonna pull it snug and tight and draw a chalk line right on the corner of the, the, the chair. That corner of the chair is, is, is important because that's exactly where you're gonna put your spikes through. You don't have to draw it straight, you're just gonna eyeball it straight. Y'all heard that man. Damn, that boy is good. All right, so last step on here is the, I gotta re retie these, um, not retie, but you double tie these to make sure they don't never pop out because I just made a basic tie at first. So we're gonna tie these down, make sure they don't ever come loose. 
And then we're going to work on the dust cloth. That's the last step, the dust cloth, and then apply the legs, put the legs back in the little plastic legs. Alright, so applying this dust cloth, you want to go center, 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 corner, 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 corner. This is the basic idea of upholstery. You want to get those centers first and then pull. See how once I got those centers and I pull to the corner, is look how easy that is. Bam. Centers already done, hit them corners. That's basic upholstery right there. You don't want to play with the center and do go to the corner, the corner. You do the center, center, corner, corner, and it just comes out perfect. Now we want to cut the holes out for these legs, and um, that's basically it. Like I said, I kind of messed up on this when I lost some footage, but the next tufted chair I do, I won't even speed it up. I'm actually going to go second by second, footage by footage and show you the actual process, the measurements, and everything. This one right here, I had to get this out for Christmas. So this was kind of a speed job. Um, not like the quality is any different, but I did I did do the first chair ahead of time and then the second one just to videotape it. But it was freezing out here. It was like two degrees out here in Georgia. I was like, man, I can't do this. So most of the time I had the heat running, so you couldn't really hear much. So I had to do the voiceover on this one. Um, it was just too much equipment running. And that's how my shop n normally goes. It's too much equipment running for me to do live action talking. So majority of my videos, actually all of my videos will be voiceover. I think I like it this way. Let me know in the comments section. Do you like me doing my voiceover? Because I think I'm doing pretty damn good. Here we go. Two tufted deep button diamond back and seat wing back chairs with real tacks. Damn, that boy is good. I know that's right. Damn, that boy is good. Make sure you guys let me know what you think about the video in the comments section. Uh, Andre's Custom Upholstery on Facebook is probably where I have most of my pictures and all my work on there. Um, just check me out here. Go right here on the screen. Um, for all my auto people, I got more auto stuff coming. Uh, next week, check me out. We got this full interior we're going to do for that same dashboard that I did last time. Same color combinations for the rest of that, that box Chevy. You know y'all like that. I think I'm going to do the door panels next week. Or well, this week, I'm going to do the door panels. And I got another dash coming this weekend. But you know how I do. I do boats, cars, furniture, everything. I think I'm going to throw a boat in there this week too. But we back on track. You guys let me know. Like, share, subscribe. Andre's Custom Upholstery. All forms of upholstery. I do every damn thing. And I'm good. I mean, damn, I'm good.
That boy is good. Mm-hmm. Good. Damn, that boy can sing.